When you ask most people what profession they associate Jesus with, they'll say carpenter, right? He learned it from his father, who was also a carpenter. But what exactly does that mean? Right? Did he build wooden structures like this? Or was he more of a general craftsman who worked with stone and other materials? Or even crafting stones that would be used for artistic masterpieces? Well, there's one place in the Holy Land that may answer all of these questions. A site near Nazareth that can give us incredible insight into these questions and so much more. So join me as we explore this amazing location in another episode of Inside the Holy Land. Now before we start, if you're interested in learning more insights that will help you to understand the Bible more clearly and see it with an entirely new set of eyes, then make sure to click the link above and down in the description where you can download a free book that I wrote called 10 Words That Will Change the Way You Read the Bible. It's a quick but powerful read that will teach you a whole lot in just a short period of time, just like this video. Speaking of, let's dive in. When Jesus' disciple Nathaniel asked the question, can anything good come from Nazareth? He had good reason to ask this question. Nazareth was tiny, a few hundred people, it was poor. As far as most people were concerned, it was insignificant. But near Nazareth, there would have been a different city that was much more well-known at that time. Sephoris. Sephoris is just a few miles away from Nazareth. It was much wealthier, much more established than Nazareth. It was filled with culture and art, wealth and trade. It was the administrative center of the Galilee, which drew people of great importance to it. And it's very likely that Sephoris was an incredibly important part of Jesus' life. You see, around the time of Jesus' birth, there was an uprising in Sephoris. Some say that it was in response to the death of Herod the Great, perhaps a, a moment when the Jewish people thought that they could reclaim the land now that he was no longer in power. But either way, the rebellion reached its climax when Judas the Galenite captured the citadel and its weapons. And in response, the Roman general Varus destroyed the city, shipping thousands off to be slaves or crucified. But this wasn't the end of Sephoris. It rebuilt and became even stronger. When Caesar Augustus put Herod Antipas in charge of this region in the wake of his father's death, he made Sephoris the capital city and fortified it. Josephus actually described it as the strongest city in Galilee. And in the years that followed, Antipas initiated massive building projects requiring large numbers of craftsmen and laborers. And it's here that Sephoris becomes so important to Jesus. Since Nazareth was such a small town, Joseph would have needed to look throughout the surrounding region for work. So in many ways, the situation at Sephoris would have been a gift. He would have had consistent work for years in a town not far from his home. And as Jesus grew older, he would have joined Joseph in this work. You see, in the Jewish community, it was expected that a young man would follow in the footsteps of his father, learning the same trade that his father practiced. And scripture tells us that Joseph was a tecton. Now, while it most often is translated carpenter, tecton has a much broader meaning. It refers to a craftsman who works with wood, stone, and other materials. And given the incredible lack of trees in Israel and the incredible abundance of stone, it's much more likely that Joseph spent his time working on something like this rather than something like this. You see, in that region, homes were made of stone. Synagogues were made of stone. Roads were made of stone. And that's just the start of it. But this also highlights why, even though Sephoris was an important source of work for Joseph, it was also a place that made him incredibly uncomfortable. You see, archeological evidence shows us that Sephoris was a primarily Jewish city, but it also shows us that it was heavily influenced by Greek and Roman culture. The homes that Joseph worked on, the materials that he worked with, would sometimes have been dedicated to the purpose of worshiping foreign gods and abominable acts. And like any father, he would have felt the responsibility to help Jesus understand these things. And the beautiful thing is, the work of a tecton was especially suited for this. You see, not only did a tecton shape and position the stone that he used, he also cut the stone from a larger rock. This required a very careful and tedious process involving water, tools, and a whole lot of patience. If the tecton tried to remove the stone too quickly, it might fragment and no longer be suited for his purposes. 
So as Jewish tectons worked their way through the slow hewing process, they would not only instruct their sons in what they were doing, they would also instruct them in other important lessons. That they would teach them the stories and the teachings of scripture. They would talk about the important issues in their village and their family. And they would address concerning things, like what they saw in places like Sephoris. Joseph would have done all of these things with Jesus from an early age, because Joseph's mission wasn't just for Jesus to reflect his father in his work. It was to reflect his father and his family in everything that he did. I mean, imagine the long walks that Jesus and Joseph took from Nazareth to Sephoris together. Imagine the memories that they shared of hewing stone and transporting it. Imagine the people that they met along the way. These experiences would have had an indelible impact upon Jesus. His experiences in Sephoris prepared him for the many other places he would go where paganism was abundant. They would have made him familiar with those who claimed to follow the Lord, but live quite differently. The work that he did with wood and stone would eventually shape the parables he taught, giving him a language through which to communicate God's word to the people. And so much of these things that were so influential in his life are still there, right? You can still find fields of stone. You can still walk the streets of Sephoris. You can see buildings and other items that date to the time of Jesus, things Joseph himself may have worked on. And it's all just a few miles away from Nazareth waiting to be explored. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure to download my free book called 10 Words That Will Change the Way You Read the Bible. You can find the link up here or down in the description. And if you'd like to see another video that will change the way you see the Holy Land, then click this box right here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.